G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. So I've been having quite a few requests uh, from all of you lovely people via Instagram for some patterns for little softies that are made up just using fabrics because I know we've all always got so many fabric scraps to use up and uh, all of you quilters out there will have so many, so many. This is the perfect little project to make up to use those up and he is very, very simple to make and uh, even for beginners. So he's a great beginner pattern. If you're new to sewing, this one you won't find challenging at all. I'm gonna be with you every step of the way, of course. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below and there's a free pattern there for you. Download those pattern templates. Make sure that you set your printer to print at actual size. Those templates will be right as rain. So who are you gonna make this one for? Let's get busy sewing. So let's begin on our little patchwork pup today and uh, this little design, uh, what kind of dog is that? Well if it had hair it would be a Saint Bernard. No it's based on a little dachshund so you can see he's very long. Now because of the way that I've designed this one he can be longer if you like or he can be shorter. That's entirely up to you. So I've used on the back section here I've used nine strips. Okay, so that's how we put him together. His back section is just made up of little strips, which means you can add to him to make him longer or take one away to make him shorter. That's entirely up to you. Your color choice with your prints, the colors are endless. You can see I've kept this one quite tonal, which is indicating a little red dachshund. Um, but of course, they, you could make him up in brights, you could make him up in patchwork denim, um, and also perhaps pastels for a baby's room would be lovely. He sits beautifully on a bed um, or on a couch or maybe for someone who doesn't have a little papa and uh, it's, he's a lovely little um, couch buddy. Okay, so that what we do with this back section is we put that back section together and then we cut our little base section, this one here, um, from that assembled top. So what we start with is as I said I have nine strips ready and mine are interfaced. I have interfaced all of the fabrics for this project. You don't have to do that. That's my personal preference. I do find it easier to work with and I just find that you get a cleaner result that it's just a little more stable. So but that's entirely up to you. Um, and I've definitely made this as a beginner project that you can sew up quickly. Um, so there's a couple of little uh, tricks in there that will make it easier. And, and that's what I'm all about. So feel confident if you're new to sewing, this one will not be difficult. So we've got our nine strips ready. And then we'll need our little front arms and legs, leg pieces. Now I've actually got two of my little limbs sewn up there. So you'll need two of the little front legs and two of the little back legs there. And you will also need your little tail pieces um, and, and your colour choices just depend on what you're doing with your little project. You'll also need your head pieces. Now your head pieces, you choose your fabrics for your head pieces in this way. This is the front of the head here and whatever you choose for the back of the head that will become your ears. So that's how you choose those. And I like uh, the ears to really stand out. So you can see that that's already, we can see they're nicely defined um, by that color choice there. We're also going to need our little nose, which I cut from felt. Uh, you can cut that one from fabric if you like. I just find uh, the face details are easy to sew on when they're in felt. And same with the little eye pieces they have heat and bond applied to the back of them and and then we need our two little buttons just to add detail to those little eyes that will be sewn on afterwards then we need a little disc this one has heat and bond applied too you'll see this in your pattern templates this is a, a different kind of opening that I'm going to create on the back of the head which will make things really easy. Now what I didn't want was for you to have to be sewing, closing an opening on what is quite a, uh, a very shapely head there. Um, so it's one of the more difficult things to do when you're stuffing and filling. So what I've done is I've created a, a little special secret opening at the back of his head 
and different technique you might not have seen before but it really makes life easy so it means that you won't have to be doing a tricky ladder stitch on any of these curves so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding that little circle to the back of our head pressing that on stitching it around and then we're going to be cutting an opening through and because this is all reinforced we'll be able to stuff the head through that opening we'll be able to quickly close it up with a very easy overcasting stitch and that is how we attach our head to our little body and you can see it will never be seen so that just eliminates one ladder stitch for you the body is put together and the opening is closed I've done that intentionally at the front so if you're not feeling very confident with your closings then this is the project for you um, it's all quite hidden um, and it's very easy and accessible to do so we've got our head pieces we're all set with those and then of course we need our piece ready which I have again interfaced and I've got that one ready to cut my panel um, ready to put together my body so that's ready for afterwards and we're also going to need some extra strong thread and that's for adding our head and our little tail pieces so you will need a button to do that you will need a button for your for attaching your head and you'll also need a button for attaching your tail so let's begin with we might make our head first that always encourages me to move on and make the rest of the body when that little face is looking at me so let's start we've taken the, the backing paper off of our little disc and so we've got our back headpiece we're just going to press that one right in the center so right in the middle just make sure it's, it's, it's nicely lined up we're going to press that one on and then you just need to take that to the machine I actually sew a little zigzag stitch all the way around just to adhere that one and just to stop those edges from fraying away you can use a straight stitch if you like um, get the one pressed on hot iron and protective cloth stitch around it and I'll show you how to make that opening I have my little disc pressed on and stitched on and you can see I've drawn a little line across there and that line is about 45 millimeters so it doesn't have to be exactly that but just don't go all the way to the edge there so you've got a little space either side I don't know if you can see that I've also done a little couple of stitches either side it just reinforces where we're going to be cutting that opening so you can see it's a few little steps but I, but it really is easier than having to sew an opening closed on that little head so I'm just going to make a little hole with my little seam ripper here so that I can get my scissors in and remember that all of this will be hidden but because we've got that heat and bond on the back there and we've made these two layers now you'll find that that's really quite stable that little edge there is really stable and it's just enough for us to turn that head through and to be able to stuff it so that's all that one's all done and it's much easier so our next step is to take our front head piece and we're going to be adding our little face features and they get positioned just as I've shown here now your little nose template sits it's just under a centimeter from the base there that just leaves us enough room for sewing that uh, little seam and it also keeps that little nose just right on the edge there which is where we want it and then our little eye pieces they actually sit for about four centimeters from each side at the top of the head there and I angle them out slightly and you can see the distance between them let's have a look that's only about a centimeter and a half or even smaller it and it's that little uh, tilting them in uh, facing each other there in the top corners is what makes it look give it that little it's a very animated little look and we will put our buttons there also give that little really little quizzical sort of look so you can test it by dropping your ears down and you'll be able to see how that will sit they will naturally sit just over those little eyes a little so you don't want them too far out so you get those pressed on again with your hot iron and protective cloth 
And now I have my little eye pieces and nose piece in place there. It is very important to make sure that you follow those instructions with where those eyes sit because it really changes the whole look of your little dog. We need the right sorts of spaces between here and here or he'll look quite odd. So how we sew these on now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. I'm going to be sewing as I have with this little one. I'm sewing a blanket applique stitch all around the outside and because I'm really going for that this project just suits a very animated look. So we've kept it very simple. I'm using a black thread so it'll really line out those uh, edges and, um, and it doesn't matter what colours I'm using on the dog. I always use a black thread to do these little eye circles and I'm going to sew a blanket applique stitch and I'm going to do the same with the little nose, um, a lot harder to see in the black. Um, now you could take this to the machine and you could sew these pieces on on the machine. Um, I do find though that this little bit of stitching is what really makes this project stand out. So if you can do it, go ahead and do it. So it's just a blanket applique stitch. If you haven't sewn one before, I'm going to put the link up the top there for you to my video that shows you how to do it. But let's do a couple of stitches here. I'm using my extra strong top stitching Gudeman thread um, and it is in black and I've just got a knot at the end, single thread and I've come in from behind right on that edge of my little shape and I'm just going to take my first stitch and I'm going to make them quite small, only about probably two and a half millimetres. I'm going in through the felt, taking up some of the underside fabric and I'm coming out through the loop. Pull that one in and there's our first stitch. Make sure that you're keeping your stitches all the same. Again coming out right on that edge there and pulling that needle out through the loop. If you have a look at that video you'll see exactly how to do that one. It's very simple and I will be making my way around the whole little circle shapes and around that little nose. Make sure especially when you're working with little circles like this that as you're sewing that you're rotating your work so that your stitches are always going outwards otherwise if you don't move your work you find that you'll get a lean to your stitches so you want them all to be radiating straight out um, like a little starburst. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all of my little pieces on and then we'll come back. And once I have my little eyes and nose pieces stitched on there I've added my little buttons and I've put them at the top and close together that gives him that little quizzical look because you can always be dropping your little ears down to check on that. You could use um, safety eyes if you prefer instead of buttons and they would be added at this stage. And now once that's all on our next step is just to add our back headpiece. So we're just putting right sides together and we're going to line up all of our edges very very well. Very important here you'll find that they will match up very well and we're going to be you can use your clips or pins whatever you like to hold those all in place and we don't have to worry about our opening because we know we've already made that one so all you have to do is sew all around the entire outside of that little headpiece and the seam allowance is four millimeters which is quite small and I always sew that seam two times for strength. So that's my head all stitched up and you can see I've gone around the edges of that seam and I've taken my pinking shears and just clipped as many of those little corners, those obvious curves as I can and what that does is it gives us a lovely rounded finish on our little ears and our little face once we've filled it out. So if you don't have pinking shears Definitely go in with your little scissors and at least notch some of those really obvious curves. So our next, next step is to turn this one through and of course we've got our little opening here and I just use my forceps to help me turn that one through and I will just take the little ears first. And take it down and through that little opening. 
and do the same with the second ear through and pull that one through and I'll use my knitting needle to push out all of my seams. Now that I have that pattern piece all turned through I've gone ahead and actually given that one a press because our next step now if you pull out your pattern templates you'll see that your little fold lines are marked in and that's where that's exactly where we need to stitch them so that our little ears just sit correctly. So it's very important that you follow these lines because if you stitch them on the wrong angle your little ears will not sit right. So we want them just to naturally fall uh, just either side of his face there. So just follow those lines exactly. I've just drawn them in uh, with my ruler and my pen and I'm now going to go to the machine and stitch each of those just two times, one on top of the other just to, to keep those ears, uh, no filling will go into those ears, they'll be nice and flat and then we will fill the rest of the head. You can see there my two little stitching lines and I've actually taken that one back to the iron and just pressed along those little lines. I just want to really encourage those ears sitting forward. And so now we can go ahead and we can fill the head and I'm going to be using my forceps which will help a lot and I start with the lower section of the head down into the little nose section just about supporting that little nose section and making sure you get that one all filled out nicely and I do like to pack this quite firm because it, we are going to be attaching by pulling a button so we want that little head shape to hold itself. I do thoroughly recommend using interfacing on your fabrics with this project I know it's just another step but it's, um, it, it really does help with your filling and gives you such a nice um, easy um, firm sort of fabric to work with especially when you're filling. So I'm just going to pack that little nose section out and then fill right up to the head. Make sure you get into these little corners. Don't overfill these little corners because we want this, this little fold over to sit nicely. So fill it all the way up. It's quite easy because as you go with this one you can be tucking into the sides and fill out those little side cheeks. Flip him over and tuck over into the other side and so on. Work your way around until your little head is nicely filled out. You can see this one really is quite firm. And there we have a sweet little puppy head there all nicely filled out. You can see it's quite firm there. And another thing that I like to do just while I'm finishing off with this head is I like to just pin those little ears just into place either side of the muzzle and I leave those pins in while we're making the body and it really encourages that top little seam to fold and it's showing those little ears where to sit so I leave those in now. So I'm going to go ahead I've got my extra strong thread and I'm going to just sew up that little slash in the back there and you can see that it's really just a very simple overcasting stitch because it's all going to be hidden when that head is joined and you can see I'm just going to pull those edges together and I'll go back and forth make sure that's really stitched up nice and tight and snip those thread ends and that will be our little head complete. And there you can see that little line is quite neat and flat there and that's our little head all done ready and we can pop that one aside while we start work on our body. So the first thing I like to do is sew up all of my little arms and legs so as I said I already have my one of my each of my legs done so we just need to take each of those pieces, each of those pairs and we're going to be using the same four millimeter seam allowance and we're going to be leaving the top edge open and sewing right around that little lower edge and I still sew these two times so that I can pack those little legs quite firm. Same with the little rear legs and the same with the tail. We leave this top curve open so we're going to start at the side here and sew all the way down 
and back again. And the stitch length I have my machine set to is a number two. Right, so those are my little limb pieces all sewn up and these two are turned through. I will just do exactly the same with this one. Just use my four sorts to turn that one through. And I have pushed out all those little seams with my knitting needle and also rolled out the seams between my fingers and thumbs. And so we've got nice rounded edges. So our next step is just to fill those. Now each of our little uh, legs are filled and I actually quite pack them quite firm at the end there. And we pack them all the way up until about probably I would say two and a half centimetres or, or an inch from the end. So we don't want any filling in the end, but we want filling all the way. So you can see how firm that is, but we stop just about an inch before we get to the end. With the tail, we can, go, we can pack that a little bit higher up because it's attached in a different way. But you can see that I'm just taking my filling and I'm filling out each of those those little toes, those little stretching toes. I like to think that he's having a big stretch there out the front. And so pack all that in, make sure you get all those little areas and fill them right up and stop just about here with each of those little pieces. My little tail piece, I will fill right up to about the end because we're going to be closing that opening with a blanket stitch. Once I have all my little limbs and my little tail filled, I've just taken my legs and I have just stitched across to close those little openings so that they're easier to pop into the seam. And with our little tail, I'm actually going to be sewing a little blanket stitch to close that one, but I've just used my clear craft glue just to put a little bit of glue to seal those edges together at the top first. Um, if you're wanting to stitch your tail on, you don't need to do this, uh, this blanket stitching now because you'll sew it on with a blanket applique stitch directly onto the body. Um, however, I'm going to be adding mine with a, with a button. By adding your tail with a button, I just find it gives you that ability, that little bit of mobility and it's better for posing and that sort of thing. Um, but that's entirely up to you. You can just stitch it on. So I'm just using my, either way, I would still glue those little edges together with your clear fabric craft glue. So if you are going to blanket stitch the top of this, I'm using a pearl thread in black. So everything will just be nicely hidden and it's just a classic blanket stitch. If you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before, I'm going to pop a link up there that shows you how to do that and it makes it all very easy for you. But blanket stitch is just taking your needle through both layers and coming out through the loop each time creates that little binding stitch. So I'm just going to stitch across. And that is my finished little tail. We can pop that one aside with the rest of the limbs. So our next step is to create our little back here with our little panels and uh, it's just a matter of working out where you want everything to sit with all of your different colors um, work out your little layout and remember that the very front panel is largely not seen and of course the little back panel is covered a little by the tail so that might help you with your with your layout decisions. So choose your most important prints right in the center there. And all we need to do is to go ahead and put right sides together and stitch. And we're using just our same four millimeter seam allowance. And we're just going to stitch each of those pieces together. And as we go, we're going to be pressing those seams out nice and flat and open. So you'll end up once you've sewn them all together, you'll end up with your one long pattern piece. So you can see there what we have now is we've created our top back pattern piece here. So our next step is simply to cut from our prepared fabric that we had done earlier. We're going to lay that one out. We're going to put right sides together and you can pin 
those into place and we're going to cut our lower pattern piece directly from our assembled front that way we know it's really going to all fit together really well so it's just a matter of pinning that one into place and then cutting out all the way around this is where if you wanted to make your little dog longer you can do that you all you need to do is add extra strips um, or you can by the same token you can make your little dog shorter if you like by taking a couple out because this pattern piece is cut after we've assembled it so I'm going to go ahead and cut that little pattern piece out I now have my top and bottom pattern pieces and my next step is I'm going to be so we're going to be incorporating our little arms and legs into the seams as we sew up this pattern piece and so I'm going to be adding my little rear legs first now I like to do these steps one at a time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one to my machine I'm not going to open it all the way up because I've got my pins nicely in place and I'm first of all going to take this one to the machine and I'm going to stitch each of those little legs just into place I've just given maybe a centimeter either side of each of those little legs space there because we're going to be sewing obviously around there so I will pin both of those into place and then I will just take that to the machine and just stitch them temporarily into place it just means it's easier for when we're joining that seam up that they're already stitching into place and we know exactly where they are so just one little line of stitching across each of those and make sure that your little legs are facing the right way obviously and that the little outer curves are on the outside so there you can see I've just stitched those temporarily into place so that's held them there I know that they're in the right position so now I can fold my top section over which is actually the rear of my little dog and now I can really line up that back seam so we could add our little front legs at the same time sew those in pin those in and stitch around the entire outside just leaving our opening but I find it's much better to do these little leg sections one at a time because then we're just stitching across and it means that you can open out once we stitched across here we can open out that little pattern piece and we can check that our little legs are nicely incorporated into that seam there's nothing worse than sewing all of your little animal together turning it through and seeing that you've just missed a little spot or haven't quite caught that little leg in the seam so much easier to do it this way so the first thing I'll do is to stitch this seam straight across here and I will stitch that seam two times and especially back and forth over these junctions where those little legs start and I increase my seam allowance a little to probably around about five to six millimeters or what you would call a quarter quarter inch so I'll just stitch straight across there and now that that seam is sewn two times we can check that those little legs are nicely incorporated into that seam and you can see that they are they're really secure so much easier to do it this way so now we can do exactly the same thing with our little front legs we're going to do those and we're just going to sew across the front there and then we will do our final side seams now the front's a little different because we're going to be leaving an opening so we're going to be popping our little front legs in there and we're going to be doing the same thing we're going to be stitching them on temporarily first as we did before and just leaving the same little seam allowance at the side so we can sew around there And when we sew this one together 
when we do this seam straight across here we're going to leave a, a little opening across the front here so you can go a couple of stitches beyond where your little leg starts and on each side and then this little opening here is where we will pull absolutely everything through so instead of stitching all the way across this time once we've stitched those into place we're just going to sew from the outside edge to just past where those little legs are joined on each side make sure you really back and forth on your start and finish because we're going to be pulling everything through that opening and we want it to be nice and strong just an extra little tip just before I actually I've got those little front legs in place just before I sew that little section I do just go ahead and sew a very close little zigzag across the top and base here between those two little legs it just means that when we're pulling it through it keeps that that little lower edge from fraying and also when we going to go to sew that ladder stitch to close it it's much easier to close when it's got that little bound edge so that's just another little tip you don't have to do it but I do find it makes a big difference and it stops all stops all your fabric fraying away so now I'm just going to sew those two little leg sections in now that I have those two little seams sewn I can now check those front legs and make sure that they're nicely incorporated and they are so now you can feel quite confident about going ahead make sure your little limbs are tucked in nicely and you can just pin your little side seams together all the way along make sure you're not capture, capturing any of that little leg in that seam make sure they're all lined up all the way along and you just need to stitch along there again I do sew that one two times now with the rear legs as I come up to the rear here rather than just going straight and finishing off straight here I do try and taper just a little just to take that very corner off um, if you're more comfortable with just sewing straight across then just sew straight across that's not a problem because that's what I've done with this one but if you want a more tapered look just taper off as you're sewing that little side seam there and you can do one side at a time and you can pull it through and check your sewing or you, if you're feeling confident you can do both and, and sew up both of them at the same time so there is our little box dog body um, and so main points to remember when you're sewing this one up just remember make sure where you position your little legs that you have room to still sew your seam and not catch any of that little leg in the sides there and you can if you like just taper those little corners just a little on the base otherwise just sew them straight as I have here at the top and sew that one two times so now we just get to turn this one through easiest way to do that is to reach in and you might feel like this is never going to turn through but it really will and you want to grab his little toes his little rear leg toes and pull those through that top opening you'll find it'll all just come through and then just tuck his little front legs in now you understand why interfacing is a good idea and also why we reinforce that little opening there there's always a reason for all these little steps and they often don't show up until later on pull that little one all the way through and we have our little boxy little dog body we can use our knitting needle to get in there and just push all of our seams out again as we always always do roll those seams out and we've got our 
nice. Already, for our little papa's head. So, but first we're going to fill him. Now, you can just fill him up with um, polyester filling. And this is one of the few times that I don't pack firmly because I actually add some rice to mine. You can see I've got him, he's quite squishy. So he's got a mixture of polyfiber filling and rice and it just I do that just because he's going to be a little bed sitter I'm not giving him to a child who is very very young um, it just uh, if you want to make it for a child as a hugging loving toy and he really does make a lovely companion because he's so long and he can tuck under little arms um, you can just fill him just softly fill him all with fiber fill but I'm going to be adding some polyester filling first. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill him with my dry white rice. Now you can actually buy plastic pellets for toy filling if you want to do that. Uh, pearl barley will work, anything like that. If you are concerned with the rice or your, your seeds, whatever you're using, um, getting moist you can always throw a little silica gel packet in with them you often find them they come with your shoes and packaged items that you buy or I, I always keep them and you can throw one of those in there in amongst that rice and that will keep the whole situation dry alternatively you could use just for a bit of weight you could use some very fine aquarium gravel um, and that will work as well but I'm going to use some rice so I'm going to add some polyester filling I'm going to pour in my rice all through this top and then I'm going to add a little bit more polyester filling and I'm going to just keep alternating all the way up until I end up with a nice squishy but weighty, quite a weighty little dog. Um, so you, go, you can go ahead and fill him up any way you like and we're going to fill him right up to the top here. And there we have a nicely filled out body, just enough softness to it. And, and enough weight to settle that nicely on a bed or a couch. So our last step with this little body is to sew up our opening. Now I'm using my extra strong thread here to do this and I've got a single strand and I've got a big knot in the end. Now uh, ladder stitch is, it can be a little tricky but remember that I've situated it at the front so if you're not really sh used to doing this one, don't worry, it will be largely hidden. So we're going to come in with our thread on just the underside right where that little seam begins. And my knot is hidden in there. Now I have a video that shows you exactly how to do this stitch. I'm going to put that link up there. Check it out if you haven't done one before it really makes the job easier but I'm going to give you a brief little run through for the sake of time so we've come out this side of the seam we're going to take our needle and we're going to dive in straight across and we're going to travel down just the length of a stitch which is probably about three to four millimeters on this one you want to keep your stitches fairly close together so that it all knits together very well so there's our first stitch there going across now because we're using multiple colors in our project if you're unsure of what color thread to use um, always go darker so match it up with your darker fabric that will always be more invisible so we go back into the same hole that we started in and we come out the same distance down as we did on the other side. So we've crossed over and we're going to pull that one in and already that's knitting that one in there. So we're going to go back into the same hole we came out of on the other side, travel down that little length of that stitch, keeping to our little seam allowance. My little dog is trying to help. You're not helping. Okay, all those little limbs. Pull that one in and you can see as we tug on that, 
those little edges are going to knit together beautifully. Now if you have not enough filling here it will be harder to do. I know that sounds like the opposite but it would be harder to do with less filling. So if you're finding it a little bit tricky add a little bit more filling and it'll hold your edges out nicely for you and you can continue on. So I'm going to just go ahead and close that entire opening with that little stitch. So there we have our little opening nicely closed there and our next step is to add our little head to our body which we will do with a string joint with our button. So I've made a mark here. Now you'll find that on your first panel section you can make a mark which is halfway between those two little front legs there and it's about a centimetre down from that first little seam. Make a little mark right in the centre and then on the base of your little dog you can see the distance there. It's just a little way, way back. It's not an exact measurement um, but you want it to be in the centre. So this is going to be our starting point where we're going to be going through our button and we're going to be diving in. We've gone through our button first and we're going to be coming out just one side of that little mark there and we want that button to stay on our thread. So that can be a little challenging while we're doing all this and we're also going to be travelling across the back of our little dog's head. So my little line is a little off centre there so we're going to be making sure that I'm going in above our little stitching line but right in the centre. I'm going to take a nice bite out of that head, make sure we get some filling in there and you see that amount there. We're going to take that one through and then we want to dive back in the other side. Same sort of distance. Flip this one over. We need lots of hands here. Flip this one over and we want to come out through the other side of our button, the other side of that mark. I hope you can see all of that. It seems very fiddly but once it all comes together it's a matter of not losing your ends. So let's turn our little dog over. I want to make sure that our threads aren't twisted. You can see that up there that I'm pulling them both in. Let's pull his little legs forward or her little legs forward. Now at this point you can have a good look because what we'll be doing is pulling that one in really snug and we're going to be knotting it off about three or four times before we snip those ends. But at this stage you can pull it all in and just check that you've got your positioning right. And if you haven't, if you don't feel happy with your head positioning, you can just pull it out and start again. It's, it's not a big deal. But I think that's just about right. And if you follow those little steps and situate it on that first panel there, as I showed you, you'll find it should fit nicely there every time pull in from that angle at the back, just pulls that in nicely and you can check that your little head will turn and tilt. But you really want to flip him over and really pull those threads in so that that little head is really secure there. Knot that one off up to three or four times, snip your ends and that's it, that's your head joined. So that has that little head attached beautifully and we've got some lovely movement there for posing. You can see on the underside it's just all pulled in and knotted off on that button. You can also see now that after having those little ears pinned there, those little ears are happy to sit there exactly where they should. So next step is to add our tail. Now if you're going to be adding the tail with a button, 
and then this is how you'll do it. If you're going to be sewing this little tail on, then you can you would have your little glued edges. You can pin that one into place and it does tend to sit just extend just over that seam line on the first strip and you could blanket applique that little one on or you could lattice stitch it on but I find that a little button allows me to have a little bit of movement and it's like a little simple joint and uh, I like that uh, posability so I've made again on this first little panel just about a centimeter down and right in the center I've got my button ready and I've got only a doubled thread this time of my extra strong thread and I'm going to go through my button I'm going to go th through my little doggy's bottom take up some filling and come just the other side of that little mark back through where I can pull those in and I can tie that one off again exactly as I did with the head joint I will knot that off about three times and then I will re-thread my ends and lose them into my little dog so that is our little tail all attached and that is our finished little patchwork dog and I think that he's absolutely gorgeous. I have had the best time <laughs> designing and making this one. I've really had a ball, so I hope you've enjoyed it too. This little project, it's funny because my little granddaughter, who I'm sure will, will grab one of these, she's only six, but of all of the things that I have in my studio and my you know one-of-a-kind artwork and so on, these are the things that she loves. These are the things that she wants to cuddle and she wants to take to bed with her. So that's really telling the kids. They love the really simple stuff and the really animated stuff. So if you're making for markets and um, craft fairs and so on, and you're most welcome to do that, you can make and sell um, from my patterns. Not a problem at all. These will go just so well and um, really just a lovely, lovely gift for a special child or for an adult, I'm um, definitely one of these I'm going to try and keep and keep actually on my bed so I've really enjoyed making them so look forward to a lot more patterns in this sort of style well thank you all for joining me today and making up this little patchwork pup I hope you've enjoyed it if you have you could give me a thumbs up that would be absolutely beaut you need to stay tuned because if you've enjoyed this one there's going to be so many more little fabric animals and I promise I'm going to make them all with fabric. We are going to be doing some more simple jointing projects as well so make sure that if you haven't subscribed now is the time to do it or you'll miss those patterns. Thank you for all your feedback and all of your suggestions everyone. I feel like I've got a whole big group of wonderful friends who are like-minded so I'm really enjoying it love having you all with me so most of all everybody remember all the good things that come to you in your day make sure that you pay them forward till next time it's huru from me